Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Coco Nomad channel where I talk about financial and location independence. And in this video, what I wanna talk about are the five best investments I made this year. And they're not what you think. So let's follow along. Hey everyone, it's the Coco Nomad here, and I wanted to review the five best investments I made in this year. And I wanted to start with one that was unexpected, and that was a return to full-time work. Now this was unexpected because I am known in my group of friends for saying years ago that I think I'm done with jobs. <laughs> and the reality is that ended up not being true. You always have to give yourself time and room to change your mind. And that's exactly what I did. So when I looked at it, I decided it was time for me to reevaluate and return to full-time work. I'd spent a lot of time consulting. I'd spent a lot of time in my many retirements, not doing much of anything or working on my own passion projects. And I saw an opportunity and I saw some gains. And what I wanted to do is just kind of outline this one and the other investments in terms of what I invested and what, the, what returns I got. So for returning to full-time work, I mean, my basic investment is my most valuable asset or resource, and that is time, energy, and attention, or what I like to call T. So I'm taking time away, I'm taking energy and attention away from other things that I could be doing. I could be working on my side projects and my passion projects. I could be doing client work. I could just be hanging out watching Netflix all day, which in some level gives me joy. But for me, I wanted those gains. I wanted some other returns and I wanted to return back to get some, some other things out of it. And so what I was able to get, primarily what I am getting, um, is exposure, experience, and, and skills acquisition. So even though I've been a software developer for you know almost my entire career, and even within this platform, there was an opportunity to learn, learn some different things about marketing, learn some different ways about building software, processes that I could learn. Now, I'm not saying I couldn't learn those inside of my consulting projects or freelancing, things like that, but in a larger organization, there's an opportunity to do things in a different way. And that's what I gain. That's what I've been gaining. And that's what I'm happy about. Combined with something that I wasn't getting in my side projects, consulting or freelancing. And that was working with a team. Most of my work is done in very, very small teams where I am probably or usually the solo dev on the platform. So I'm not necessarily working with another developer where we're exchanging ideas. Now there's sometimes there is a bit of that, but this one is now it's actually multiplied because I have multiple team members across platforms bringing everything from like infrastructure to my platform and language specific things, experiences and knowledge. And for me, that just increased it, you know, many, many fold. And that's a huge return on that investment of time, energy and attention. And that's not something that I underestimate. It was unexpected that I would go back, but I'm very, very glad. And then of course the final return of course is the obvious one that anyone would expect, right? That I get a paycheck, right? Um, but my primary focus wasn't just the money because again, I could continue to just do consulting work, increase my hours of freelancing and things of that nature. But I really did want something different and I wanted it in this instant in a place where I had a positive experience working last time. And that's so I returned to the company that I worked for. The next investment that I made, I think is one that is severely underrated and I don't think it gets enough uh, attention, quite frankly. I think there's stigma still and I think it's very important and that is therapy. Um, I returned to therapy this year after many, many, over a decade of uh, being away from it and I got a lot of benefit out of it the first time. But in my mind, I thought of it only in the context of sort of grief counseling and, and sort of in, in, in sort of a negative sense. I didn't really look at it in the positive terms that there didn't have to be a quote unquote problem going on in my life that I needed to address. And the investment in this one is simply, again, I do have to spend some time, energy and attention, not nearly as much as a full time job per se. And there is a cost. I do pay monthly for uh, therapist sessions that I do uh, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. So there is a cost to that, that is a monetary cost. But when we think about the returns or the benefits, it's huge. Uh, the best thing about it is I get a better perspective or a different perspective 
on my work and my life, my personal life. I actually bring lots of things from my life into session and talk about these things. And I'm getting a second opinion. The second opinion from someone who's from the outside. They're not inside my head. They don't have the same biases and the fears. And they can ask pointed questions that help me sort of challenge myself. And that's the best thing about it. It's being in session and challenging myself in my assumptions and my past and unpacking things and trying to really understand why I do things the way I do them and looking at opportunities for change and improvements to say, is this something that I want to change? Because that is an option. And if it is, what steps am I going to take to actually bring about that change? And so for me, it's one of the most positive things that you can do. And it's a great investment that you can make in your life, in your personal, professional, whatever you want to do. I'm a strong, strong proponent for therapy. Um, this is not a plug. I am on BetterHelp. Um, that is the service that I use. There are lots of independent uh, therapists out there as well, many of which are using BetterHelp, actually. The one that I use is like he, he, he's an independent therapist. He just offers his services through BetterHelp as well as his own clinical work. Best benefit number three this year was returning to Mexico City and specifically the neighborhood that I live in, San Miguel Chapultepec. Again, this was not an expected thing. I actually had plans at this point in the year to be traveling to other parts of the world. Of course, I did last year as well, and we all know how our plans turned out in the last couple of years. But this time I had some plans that I was gonna be traveling to back to the Caribbean and doing some different things. Unfortunately, they fell through, and I decided that I would return to one of my favorite cities in the world. But I would do it differently. This time, instead of staying in the neighborhoods that I normally stay in, typically Del Valle, um, and areas around it, I decided I wanted to check out this park I've been hearing so much about. It's very, very large. I've heard it compared to Central Park. And I was like, hmm, it's gonna cost me a little bit more money to do this, but I think it'll be worth it. And it was, I invested more money in an apartment that's larger than what I normally uh, rent. I was able to invite people to come and visit family and friends from the US and other parts of the world to come and stay if they wanted to uh, experience this part of the city with me. And, but for it, even just outside of that, and just for my own personal, physical, and mental well being, it has been phenomenal. This might be the best investment in, in terms of the returns that I've gotten of all the things on the list. And that's because I spent a lot of time in the park. And it's like the first time I walked in the park, it just sort of solidified the decision set. This was the right decision. I'm in the right place. I walk almost every day, and I'm, I do that in the park. And so I am there. I really enjoy a lot of the facilities there. Uh, there are lakes. Uh, there's a castle that I've been to a couple of times. There's amusement rides. There's a zoo, which is not really my, my jam, but it's there. <laughs> um, there's a roller coaster in one of the sections, which I still think is very weird. And there are tons of museums. And so I really do appreciate all of that and the community that I've also experienced by returning here to Mexico City, reuniting with friends and reconnecting with other people, I think is great. Um, but the park absolutely positively is the highlight. So much, in fact, I'm seriously considering coming back after a visit home just to sort of continue to experience those benefits. So we'll see how that goes. And the next investment that I've made is actually related to the previous one in the park, and that is walking. I've actually returned to making walking a primary basic component of my overall health and fitness. Now, I'm a big fan of walking. I love walking cities, but in the, a few of the previous destinations, it was a little bit harder. For instance, in Antigua, uh, Antigua is just not that large. And so I found myself, even though I could walk, I'm walking in circles, walking in blocks, and I'm walking just within the confines of the city, which isn't very large. And in Playa del Carmen, which is where I was before, I could walk as well, but it got really, really hot. And then it restricted me to walking at certain times of the day, unless I just wanted to sweat and be out in the heat in the sun, which I really don't like at all. So it sort of hampered here in the city, as I mentioned in the previous investment, returning to the city offered me opportunity to do the walking. And so my base is that I try to walk between 30 and 60 minutes per day as a bare minimum. And what I do during those walks typically is that I, I normally have music on or I'm listening to podcasts. It gives me a chance to do that, that. Sometimes I don't have anything on and I just want to like sort of clear my head, get my thoughts out. 
And usually I do a bit of both though. Usually I'm listening to a podcast, kind of halfway paying attention, collecting my thoughts, and then I'll maybe make some voice memos and make some notes. But the beautiful thing about this is it actually serves as the baseline for the rest of my fitness routine. A lot of times I will, I started walking as sort of like the basis just to get out of the house, just to get the exercise. And then I slowly started adding some running. So in, in terms of just walking a bit, and then I like run a half a mile, three quarters of a mile, a mile, a mile and a half. And then I throw, for instance, my shadow boxing routine. So I do my boxing on top of it, or maybe do some capoeira on top of that. So I find myself just sort of like using the walking as the base level. So I make sure I'm getting a bare bones level of fitness and exercise, and then adding my other fitness routines on top to get that compounded interest. So we talk about a return and that's the, probably the biggest return for me there. It's just, it's allowing me to stay in a better, better physical shape and better mental shape uh, moving forward. So um, that is really playing a strong role in my decisions of where I want to live moving forward, because I really, really see being in this city and walking is probably the two biggest returns on investment for not a lot of cost. I mean, yes, I'm paying more to live in this city. I'm paying more to be accessible to the park, but I can probably adjust it. I can, I'm going to downsize maybe to a smaller apartment, maybe move a few blocks away. So it'll make, take me a couple of minutes more to get to the park. But at the end of the day, and there are three sections, so I do have some other options. This park is massive and walking is already built in, so I'm already walking. So if it walks a little bit extra time to get there, it's not a big deal. And this brings us to the final investment that I made, the best investment of 2021. And this is the one that most people probably would have expected, right? This is my return to actual investing in, uh, in the stock market. And I do that via options trading. I've been spending a lot of time learning, watching videos and reading materials about options trading and learning some strategies and finding the strategy that worked best for me. And so my investment is that time, energy and attention in learning and paying attention and understanding and then actual capital. Now, this comes full circle because the capital that I'm actually investing in is coming from that full time job, which was the number one best investment that I made. So you can see how these things are interconnected. None of these things are sort of off on an island in terms of investment. Even my investment strategy in myself, it's very aligned and very intersected and integrated. Now the returns to on this are actually uh, quantifiable. So where for the other ones, I can talk about my increased health and my increased mental uh, state, a better mental, mental state and being happy to acquire some skills. Those are harder to quantify. Whereas this one, quite frankly, can measure it in dollars and cents. And that's exactly what I do. I produce a monthly investment report along with some of these other financial reports that I share on the channel where you can see exactly what type of benefit I'm getting out of that. But I wanna be clear here too, and I wanna share something, and I think this is really important. I don't look at the dollar amount in and of itself as the, as the primary metric. It is a metric that I use, but I'm looking at all of these other investments that I've made and all of those other returns. They all work together to create this healthy portfolio that I have for my life now. And it's having an immense positive benefit. And so I would encourage anyone who's watching and following along to develop their own. And I ask you, what investments did you make this year? And they don't, as you can see, they don't just have to be monetary, like investing in crypto or investing in the stock market or something like that. You can make investments in several ways. So comment below what those investments are. And while you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed and are interested in following along, I really would appreciate a follow subscribing to the channel and clicking that notification bell so you can see when other videos are available. And that's going to close out today. And as always, I'm going to wish you, hope you have an amazing day and I will talk to you next time. Cheers.